Some folk'll never eat a skunk, and most folk'll never lose a toe, but then again, some folk will, like Cletus, the slack-jawed yokel. Hey, what's going on on this side? Very little is certain about Cletus Spuckler, like the true nature of his relationship with Brandine. Wait a minute, are you two brother and sister? We's all kinda things. The true nature of how many sprogs he's got, as well as how the man ain't dead yet after years of drinking questionable moonshine. So, to untangle this tumbleweed of a life, this is the complete timeline of Cletus Sparkler. I could call my ma while I'm up here. Hey, Ma! Get off the dang roof! Marrying Brandine. Like many characters, Cletus doesn't have much in the way of a clear backstory, but one thing that is clear is that he grew up incredibly poor and was likely part of a large extended family. What this family looks like has never been fully discussed, but it does seem to have some crossover into his wife's, Brandine's, given that there are many jokes about their twisted family tree. Now, honey, it's my parents too. <laughs> That being said, it's been heavily implied that he and Brandine have the same mother, but then the possibility of her being his mother has also been posed in the show. You are the most wonderful husband and son I ever had. And to make things even weirder, according to a hand-drawn family tree, Brandine is the child of Cletus and an alien. But saying that, Cletus once believed a UPS delivery man was an alien and therefore locked him up in his cellar. So who knows by this point? His and Brandine's Miku appeared in the episode Pretty Whittle Liars. Brandine's sister is having a shotgun wedding and who's to sit at Brandine's table? A dashing and quite frankly charming Cletus. And it was love at first tractor ride. And it was at this point that Brandine decided that the very next shotgun wedding will be hers. The two were then going to have an absurd amount of kids, whom they must have started conceiving from the word go, or the shot of a shotgun. Of all the cousins I could have married, you was my sister. <laughs> Drinking that sweet, sweet thermometer juice. Cletus in the show has been represented as being a bit of an idiot, and it would be ignorant to say it's just down to how he lives his life, and that being a stereotypical redneck automatically leads you to a life of idiocy. So I was kind of relieved to find out that there was a reason as to why he was the way he was. Well, as it turns out, Cletus's intelligence appears to have been directly impacted by drinking the mercury out of thermometers. I don't have such a good memory since I drank my thermometer. The guy basically has no short-term memory because of it. Looking at these flashbacks of him earlier, he seemed like a pretty smooth, charismatic fellow, so we can only assume he may have tasted the sweet nectar of mercury after he met Brandine. Taking things that step further, Cletus even seems to have some sort of precognitive abilities that allow him to quite whittlery see into the future. Ah, uh, sometimes I whittle the future. <laughs> the standing theory is that drinking all that mercury gave him these abilities rather than killing him, and it's entirely possible that the mercury combined with the moonshine in his system gave him these special powers. His seemingly endless number of kids. The size of Cletus's and Brandine's family is debatable and more than a little frightening, and throughout The Simpsons multiple decades on air, we have been introduced to many of the Sparkler kids. He's had so many, in fact, that it seems to defy mathematics. Now it is possible that some of the kids are adopted, as we do know that some of them aren't actually Cletus's. He's only the father of two of them. Now I'm no mom, so there's little room for me to judge parenting methods. That being said, some of Cletus's have been incredibly dubious. On more than one occasion, he has taken advantage of his kids' talents to make money for himself. Signing a deal with Krusty the Clown, the kids were forced to perform on his TV show until Branding stepped in to stop it. He even tried to marry off his daughter, Mary WrestleMania Sparkler, to Bart Simpson, but to his credit, he was only abiding by the law of the hill folk, 
But even still, marrying off your 10 year old daughter over a cow is well and mooly crazy. And that's not the only time he's dictated the lives of his kids. He does that as soon as they're born, naming them after what he thinks is going to happen to them. Ain't that right, stabbed in jail? We'll see who stabs who. The hero of Trappuccino. To this day, The Simpsons have only had one feature film under their belts, but with Disney now being in charge of the franchise's future, I'm sure that's about to change. In the movie, Madman Russ Cargill put a dome over the city to prevent its polluted ways from infecting the rest of the country. When the Springfield residents were making an escape attempt, Cletus volunteered to provide a distraction. He was willing to sacrifice himself to save everyone else. And naturally, Homer screwed the whole thing up, but Cletus's heart was definitely in the right place. He was talking to Russ and everyone else was climbing up on that rope. He would have no time to escape. A career-driven man. Homer's had a whole lot of jobs in his life probably the most out of any individual in Springfield, but a close second is Cletus, as the man has worn many hats throughout his life, many of which have been made from roadkill. The man's main income seems to be from his dirt farm where he lives with Brandine and his untold amount of kids. And in addition to that, he also has a vegetable shack near the Quickie Mart, as well as a business selling miscellaneous animal parts to Krusty Burger. Rusty burgers are made of roadkill? That explains the tire tracks. But his real claim to fame seems to be his successful chain of moonshine stands. Now, I've got to say, Cletus doesn't know a whole lot of things, but the man does know a good shine. And if he was better at managing his money, he and the rest of his kin would be a whole lot better off. I mean, for example, what the hell happened to all that cult money? Do you happen to need a messiah? No, but I'll take down sacks of money from you. And it's not just whittling moonshine stands and predicting the future. Cletus has also showed strengths in music too. When Homer is locked in a slammer with him, he plays a song that changes our protagonist's outlook and respect for his family life forever. If you count a lifetime as the next 20 or so minutes. As it turns out, Cletus and his acoustic guitar had the power to turn heads at every venue he played. But along the way, he lost sight of his own family. And so after some straight talking by the Simpsons, our yokel hero becomes our home hero again. This episode not only showed his talent for music, but also how powerful his love was for his family and Brandine. Aw, no one sweet talks me like you, goat lips. The man has a whole lot of love to give, extending all the way to 742 Evergreen Terrace with his ever-growing friendship with Homer. In the episode The Incredible Lightness of Being a Baby, Mr. Burns uses Homer to steal Cletus's newly discovered helium. But as Cletus shows Homer how pure the love of a country boy is, Homer refuses to make Cletus sign away his business and livelihood, prioritizing his friendship over impressing his boss. So by the end of the episode, Mr. Burns is forced to sign a deal with Cletus so he can use his helium, a deal that now possibly makes Cletus a millionaire. His married life ain't so perfect. Now, for simple folk like Cletus and Brandine, you'd expect their relationship to be pretty straightforward, but that all changed with the episode Pretty Whittle Liar. At Marge's book club, Brandine shares her in-depth analysis that shocks the other ladies, and word soon spreads that Brandine is a secret smarty pants until it reaches Cletus. After confronting his wife about this, she reveals that she's been going to cultural events and reading books in her free time, and so Cletus feels that she is now a stranger to him. Brandine, who is you? <sighs> So therefore, she gets kicked out of their shack and she is broken. So like many characters down on their luck, she moves in with the Simpsons family, but misses Cletus and her children deeply. When Homer talks to Cletus, it does reveal that he still loves Brandine, but he's conflicted that she was hiding her true self from him. But Cletus made a real effort by signing up for a library card and checking out Green Eggs and Ham, so he can learn to have something in common with her. 
This episode showed us how dedicated he was to honesty and trust, the core elements of any functional relationship. And it has to be said that I also like the way that Brandine didn't have to dumb herself down by the end of the episode. She was able to be her true self, now teaching Lisa to also be proud of who she is. Cletus Buckler's future. So whatever your stance may be on the politics of today, you'd either be elated or devastated to learn that Cletus will become the Vice President of the United States. Could it be that his future predicting powers combined with his unassuming brilliance may have been tied together to create a successful candidate? Maybe. But let's face it, he's got the core family values, the adoring wife, the likability, he may just have the grit, moonshine and helium to go all the darn way. 